Thank you so much for clicking this video. My name is Heather Chesina and you are welcome. <laughs> if you have looked at the thumbnail and you're wondering, oh my goodness, why is this so dramatic? Well, it's because I actually had a terrifying dream that is accurately depicted by the thumbnail that I created. My goal for this particular video is not to force you to forgiveness. I'm just here to share my testimony and my story and how forgiveness radically shifted the trajectory of my purpose journey. I hope that from this particular video, you can yield to the Holy Spirit. And I know that at times forgiveness is a very, very difficult journey of healing. And that is why the Holy Spirit is there. He is our counselor. I hope that you will be able to yield to the Holy Spirit. So I'm not here to give you time frames and what you can expect from forgiveness. What I can tell you is the outcome of actually heeding to that call to forgive is really, really beautiful, at least in my life. Why am I recording this video? Well, it is because we are ushering in the new Jewish year 5784. And as of 2023, we have entered a Joseph season. So 2023 was a year of Goshen. And this particular coming year, it's going to be the year of open doors for Joseph's in a Goshen season. And one particular theme out of the many themes in Joseph's story was forgiveness. And in this season, I just believe that we need to walk in that same spirit of forgiveness. So this is why this particular video is very, very important in this particular season. So I hope you are ready. I'll go ahead and start with just explaining the background of unforgiveness. Let us go back to the year 2012 so that I can give you some context. The year 2012, I was dealing with a lot of unforgiveness. And not only that, the unforgiveness had morphed into bitterness. I was really bitter about a particular situation and I felt justified. I was wronged. So it is okay for me to not forgive in this particular situation. And it's okay for me to be bitter because guess what? I am hurt. So coming from a Christian who knows that we are commanded to forgive, that was a situation where I felt as if I could kind of bend the rules and say that this is the exception. Surely this is the exception. We serve a loving God, a merciful God, a forgiving God. And surely he will forgive me in my situation of unforgiveness because guess what? It is justified and the Lord knows my heart. I went ahead to host a Tanzanian preacher in that particular year in 2012 and she was spirit filled and she walked with a lot of insight and discernment. The first time she met me, she picked out something. She didn't mention it the first day, but in the first week she came to me and she said that she feels as if the Lord is telling her that I need to forgive and let go. I need to forgive and let go. I opened up to her and I told her, yes, I am dealing with a lot of unforgiveness, but guess what? It's justified. So she really took me through the scriptures and I told her, I, I, I hear you, but Trust me, I will not forgive. And guess what? This is my sarcasm coming in. <laughs> I told her, guess what? If I forgive, all there's left to do is a chariot of fire will come and take me to heaven and I will be told good and well done, faithful servant. <laughs> I was just so sarcastic. I was so sarcastic. And she told me, oh my, I have never encountered someone who carries this amount of unforgiveness. And she said that she would pray on it. She would really pray on it. At this particular time, I had opened up to her about a dream job and she had been walking me through Habakkuk 2.2 and I actually wrote down seven things in my dream job. If you've watched my video about my dream job testimony, you need to watch that. So this is actually the background story of it all. So she told me that, you know, you're not going to get your dream job if you do not forgive. That's what she told me. She told me that the, 
the devil has legal ground to fight you on this particular job. I said, uh, okay, whatever. I didn't hear her. So during that week, I tell you, I got so many messages. Anytime I would turn on the, uh, the radio when I was going to work, it was all about forgiveness. Every song on forgiveness was playing that. And I, I was like, okay, what is going on? You know what? I can roll down the windows and just enjoy the fresh air. That's fine. I don't know. I do not need to listen to that. Anything that I tried to do that week, it was about forgiveness. And I knew that the Lord was pursuing me <laughs> in this particular instance. Now, at the end of the week, I was really frustrated because I knew every everybody, even at work, was just talking about, oh, yesterday, guess what? Someone was talking about forgiveness and all this and all that. I was done. At the end of this particular week, I decided to watch a video. I think, was it on TBN? And I said, guess what? I'm not even going to watch a English video. I'm going to watch a, an independent film for kids. <laughs> Because there was nothing I could watch. Everything was about forgiveness. So I watched, I, I think this was a Scandinavian film. I don't know where, where exactly, but it was about this kids in some rural mo mountainous area. And I'm still looking for that film because it's just lovely. So in any case, the film was beautiful and it kind of reminded me of Mary Poppins and Sound of Music. It was just beautiful. And then towards the end, <laughs> It was about forgiveness. And I shut down my laptop and I was like, I'm done. And when I shut it off, there was something that just kept on playing. Forgiveness, forgiveness. And I said, look, I'm done. And I told God, okay, you've got my attention. I Give me two years. Give me two years and then I will consider forgiveness. Now, <laughs> now I was starting to be like okay I'll, I'll i'll think about it i will not be harboring this unforgiveness till eternity <laughs> i will just just give me two years just give me two years to sit in this unforgiveness so i went to bed that night and this is when i had this dream and in this particular dream not a vision a dream in this particular dream i saw jesus who he had a gift and he was about to give me and I was excited. I was so excited and I was, I was just celebrating. I was very jubilant. And then I heard a voice and it said in Swahili, but she hasn't forgiven them. And that voice up till now, I can just feel it in my bones. It was terrifying. It gave me the shivers, the chills. I could actually hear the voice. Not hear, not hear. <laughs> okay, of course I could hear, but I could feel the voice. It was terrifying. And it, it just had this anger. And, she, and it said, Lakini haja wasamehe. That's Swahili for, but she hasn't forgiven them. And it had this anger. I woke up, I cried. I woke up, I sat up and I cried. And I told God, Oh my goodness. I'm sorry. I've been playing this past week. I wasn't hearing the voice of your servant. I wasn't hearing all these cues about forgiveness. And this particular dream job that's aligned to my purpose is going to be potentially be blocked because of my unforgiveness. That really scared me. When I tell you that voice scared me, it scared me because of the anger. And when I woke up, um, it took me back to the verse that talks about Satan being the accuser of the brethren the brethren right the accuser of the brethren and i just broke down and i told god god give me till 7 a.m i don't want to die because <laughs> now i felt so scared after hearing that voice i was so scared and i said god just give me till 7 a.m in the morning and i will call those people and release them and then on my part if i've done anything i will also ask for forgiveness in this case that's something that i was led to do i'm not telling you to to do this after that, I went back to bed. I didn't even lay my head on the pillow and I had this big commanding voice and it said, <laughs> This was the first time that I heard anything like this in 2012 and it was so loud. <laughs> and I remember in the morning asking, oh, why, especially the Tanzanian uh, preacher, I said, why were you shouting 
in my room at night. Uh, amen. I, I knew it wasn't her, but <laughs> I was just trying to block it out. In any case, yeah, I asked her, hey, did, are you the one who was shouting amen in my room at around this time? She was like, girl, what are you talking about? In any case, that was my dream and it led me to forgiveness uh, without reconciliation. Forgiveness without reconciliation. And as I said, forgiveness is such a um, sensitive topic some people can be led to forgive with full total reconciliation depending on what happened other people like for example if there are some people who hurt you and you're dealing with a history of addiction and maybe these people who hurt you are still in addiction at, you know god will tell you at times hey do not forgive but don't hang around these people because they can be a bad influence to you in this fragile state that you are in forgiveness is so different for different people it looks different for different people as far as reconciliation that is <laughs> as far as reconciliation friends that is my story and what i can tell you is that after that forgiveness i did get my dream job i did get my dream job that actually prepared me for my purpose and the enemy was gang-ho about blocking it and he used unforgiveness in my courts of heaven blog post i actually go ahead and reference this because I believe the enemy will use certain things as legal ground in the courts of heaven to block you from different things in your life. In my situation, I was led to forgiveness without reconciliation. And I think this is one of the things that leads people to really see forgiveness as something totally, totally difficult is they see it as a package deal that forgiveness automatically comes with reconciliation. That is not the case. That is not the case. In my situation, it was forgiveness without reconciliation. From here on out, I will ask that you yield to the Holy Spirit and spend some time in the secret place if you need direct on how to proceed in your forgiveness journey. And that's it, folks. Thank you so much for clicking this video. I really, really appreciate you. And guess what? I will see you on the next what one. What can Bye. I do but sing And give to you all the glory You put all my fears to rest I bring to you my anxiety Oh, I am forever blessed Your passion is always chasing